it's been a summer since I did the initial planting of my pecan trees and some of them lived and some of them didn't. I've done a full assessment of the trees and I want to share that with you. There's been a long argument as far as what's better to plant. Is it better to do potted trees or to do bare root trees? And I've heard two different things from two different groups of people. People who grow potted trees are like, yeah, plant potted trees. If you plant potted trees, they're gonna outgrow the bare root trees. And then there are people who are bare root people are like, no, if you're planting a farm, definitely plant bare root trees. So I definitely have opinion about that now after this first summer and I want to share that with you. So that everybody can understand what's going on, I do feel like I need to do a basic recap. This land that I'm doing the pecan orchard on was raw land. We have 150 acres and in 2021 I had my dad's cousin Frank King. He cleared 20 acres for the pecan trees and this is what it looked like after it was done. The next step was for me to choose my varietals and get the trees planted. And I chose three varietals. Amling and Gafford were gonna be my pollinators and Lakota, my main crop. I chose these specific varietals because they are disease resistant plants. Since I'm so far away and I'm only gonna be able to make it down every once in a while, I wanted to make sure and get a tree that was gonna be as low maintenance as possible. I'd done a soil sample and it came back and said I didn't do much to the property. So I didn't, I didn't lime or anything. I've talked to some farmers since that said, regardless of what the soil sample came back as, if you have pine trees on the property, you should have limed. So maybe I should have done that, but I didn't. I contacted a guy named Gary Underwood in Summerdale, Alabama, and he has potted trees. And Gary was one of the few suppliers of Amling and Gafford that I could find. I haven't been able to find a, a bare root supplier of Gafford or Amling anywhere, but Gary had the potted varietals. The other nursery I used was in Pelham, Georgia. The owner of that is D. Simpson, and the nursery is called Ho-Hum. I got all of my bare root Lakotas from Ho-Hum. I bought 124 potted trees from Gary Underwood. And the nice thing about potted trees is there's no rush, they're potted. So, you know, if you wanna plant those trees a week later, you can. With bare root trees, you can't do that. Bare root trees, when you pull them up out of the ground, you gotta keep those roots moist and you gotta keep them moist from the time that you pull them out of the ground to the time that you plant them back in the ground. If you don't, if those roots dry out, then those trees are gonna die. So that posed a little bit of a problem for me because Pelham, Georgia is like four hours away. And because it's so far away, I was really worried that my bare root trees were going to dry out. So Dee hired a refrigeration truck. He pulled the trees out, put them into the refrigeration truck, shipped them off to Brady Lucas. And then Brady Lucas's family had a pond not too far away and we dropped the bare root trees into the pond so that we could keep the roots uh, wet and moist. I mean, you really can't give uh, pecan trees too much water. So you just drop them in the pond and leave the roots in the pond until you plant them. Now, we were gonna plant the next day. Real quick, one little tip that Dee Simpson did give me about the uh, bare root trees and putting them into ponds is you wanna make sure that the pond that you're putting them into does not have beavers because if that pond has beavers, then there's a good chance that the beavers will mow through the pecan trees overnight and kill them all. So you don't want that to happen. So that's one little pro tip that Dee gave me and I really appreciated it. When you plant bare root trees too, one other thing that complicates it a little bit is you actually have to really pay attention to how you prune the trees. Whoever your nursery is, talk to them about how they recommend that you do it. But basically when you cut the, when you cut the hole, that you're gonna be putting them in. You have to trim the lateral branches of the roots uh, to the size of the hole. And then you wanna cut back the uh, tap root. Also, after you've got the bare root tree in the ground, you have to lop off like, I think it's six inches off the top as well. Uh, that'll encourage that top to start growing. So as far as planting the trees, potted trees are super, super easy. Bare root trees take a little more effort. So that's something that you wanna think about when you're thinking about uh, planting trees. It took Brady about two days for he and his guys 
to plant all 498 trees. And this is what it looked like after they had planted it. I'm gonna be planting more trees. Next time I plant the trees though, I'm not gonna use the pond that Brady's family has because we were having to truck the trees from the pond to the property, you know, like, I don't know, 12 trees at a time, plant those, then go get back and get more trees. So next time I do this, I'm gonna dig a trench on my property, kind of like this one that D has from his website. When I have the trees delivered, I'm gonna fill this up with water and then just drop the trees in here so that I don't have to go to somebody else's property. I just need to grab them straight out of this little pond that I've created, and then we can go and drop them straight in. It's gonna make it much easier. When you're doing bare root trees, the way that they pull the trees out of the ground is that they use an excavator and they scoop right the dirt right in front and then they pull on the, the trunk until the, root, the roots come free and then they pull it out and then they pile them up into a, a pile and they ship them off. So that process can get a little violent. Sometimes you do damage the trees. So if you're having bare root trees delivered, make sure you check out your root systems because sometimes the tap root when they're pulling it out of the ground will get cracked. And I had a few trees that the tap roots were cracked all the way down and I just don't think that they had a chance. Not only that, make sure you count how many trees you have. My order was short 32 Lakota trees when it arrived. Uh, an honest mistake, D. Simpson was awesome. He took care of me, he refunded me for those trees, and he also helped me out with the trees that uh, had broken uh, tap roots. Because the thing is, you're pruning back the roots anyway. Um, if your roots are a little damaged, that doesn't mean the tree's not gonna live. But I had some main tap roots that were like cracked all the way down. And I just don't think that they had a chance. When I found out that I was short 32 Lakota trees, um, I didn't wanna order them from D. Simpson because if I'd done that, I was gonna have to pay for shipping all the way from Pelham and it was gonna cost me more money than I wanted to spend. Gary Underwood was like an hour and a half away by car and he had potted Lakotas. So I bought 32 potted Lakotas from Gary Underwood and I planted two rows of Lakotas that were potted. Just a few months later in August, I was back to check on the trees. So we're almost at the end of summer and this is what the weeds look like. Okay, this is me. I'm 5'8 and I mean, look at that. I was blown away. I have a whole uh, video about it. You can check it out about the weeds gone wild. And um, I was really freaking out because the weeds were super dense up around my trees. I also had tree protectors around the trees and the tree protectors were already holding moisture. So I had like quadruple the amount of moisture being held. And I ended up having some problems with that. That's one of the reasons I think I lost some of my trees was that they got root rot from all that moisture buildup. So if you're planting these trees and you are near them, make sure you keep those weeds down because it not only does it steal water from the trees, but um, the weeds can actually uh, hold moisture in between them. And if it's really dense weeds, it can cause root rot on your trees and fungus and other problems. Okay, so here's the assessment chart that I made. It's pretty thorough. Green is flourishing, yellow is struggling, orange means I think it's gonna die, but there's a slim chance it could live, and red is dead. The blue boxes have an E on them. That means that the root stock, which is Elliot, has lived, but the graft is dead. All right, so let's look at this a little closer. Here are my pollinators. Look how many dead trees are on those pollinator rows. Now I have to say, all of my pollinators were potted trees. My main crop Lakota, the vast majority of those, were bare root. Right here, you'll see two rows that are Lakota rows. I got 32 Lakota trees that were potted. What's interesting here is that the two rows of Lakota trees that were potted, they didn't do so well. This mapping's pretty thorough, and I'm gonna continue doing these assessments and looking back at them and comparing them, but let me show you the numbers. I planted 498 trees total. 158 trees were potted. 126 of those were my pollinators. And then I had 32 main crop Lakotas that were also potted. 340 trees were bare root trees. All 340 bare root trees were my main crop Lakota trees. After I assessed the trees, I discovered 
that 87 of the potted trees died. Also, 68 bare root trees died. So basically, 55% of the potted trees I planted died, while only 20% of the bare root trees died. I was told by Dee Simpson from How Hum Nurseries that I could expect a loss of around 10% of the trees I planted. He said that's a fairly normal mortality rate for planted trees, but it also depends on how well you care for them. So I think 20%, given the way that I treated the trees, the fact that I let the weeds get out of control and the land wasn't really prepared, I think that's a number that I can actually work with and improve upon. But 55%, <laughs> I can't do that. Trees usually cost from around $10 to $25. The loss of the potted trees alone was $2,523, both for the cost of the trees and planting. Not to mention, $250 for delivery of the trees. The bare root trees performed way better. I lost 35% more of the potted trees than I did the bare root trees. If you just plant a few trees and you want to plant potted trees, go for it. But if you can't manage the weeds and really take care of those trees and baby them, do not use potted trees. I would plant bare root trees, especially if you're planting a large number of trees, like a whole field definitely use bare root trees. It's a little bit of more of a hassle uh, going in, um, but once you get them in the ground, they're gonna do, at least mine did, did much, much, much better. The awesome thing about Ho-Hum Nurseries is that depending upon the size of the tree, he charged me different prices. And his prices were very fair, uh, very reasonable. Not only do I think he's a great grower, I feel like he grows for farmers. So he gave me enormous amounts of, of information about how to grow the trees. Even today, I'll call him up, I'll text him, I'll say, hey D, what do you think about this? What do you think about my spacing? Um, also, as far as like spacing goes, like he gave me a great tip. He goes, no, don't space your trees 75 feet apart. I'm like, well, why is that? And he goes, because you're never gonna be, like, I don't have all the pecan equipment that I need, right? So I'm gonna have to hire somebody to come out and harvest the pecans for me. So D was like, you're never gonna be able to get somebody out to harvest your pecans and make it worth your while and their while. He goes, you do a, a denser spacing, rows are fine at 30 feet apart, but space those trees at 20 feet apart. Um, so that you have a lot more trees that are producing nuts. So when you come and harvest them, you can actually make more off of that acreage and it'll be worth your while. Tree space is 75 feet apart. You know, when they're 75, 75, 100 years old, you're gonna make some money off of them because they're producing over 100 pounds of, of nuts per tree. But when they're smaller, they're producing 50 pounds of nuts. You wanna make as much money as you possibly can up front, kind of cover your cost because man, Having pecan trees, it's not cheap, it's expensive. You have to pay for uh, fungicides, you have to pay for fertilizers, you have to have somebody like Brady Lucas or cut the grass and prune the trees. I'm going out in November, I'm gonna be doing all the pruning on all my trees myself, so I don't have to pay somebody to do it. So it can be expensive, so I thought that was excellent advice from D. So anyway, he gives me advice like that, he talks to me about irrigation and how he does his irrigation and I'll, tell him what I'm thinking about doing for mine and he'll let me know. All that to say, D. Simpson, awesome guy, highly recommend him, highly recommend that nursery. You should definitely go and visit them. And that's the summary. Use bare root trees and dense planting if you're trying to do some sort of commercial orchard and make some money off of it. Don't start off planting them wide space. Plant them closer together and then, you know, in 15, 20 years, you need to thin them out. You either cut them down, because that's nice, easy, and cheap, or get invest in a uh, tree spade and move them to a new location so they're spaced out. Big shout out to Signature Tracks and SignatureTracks.com for their awesome music, and to Boris Sapphire for their industry-leading visual effects. And with that, I'm done. Thanks so much for watching LA Editor Alabama King. Click like and subscribe, please. I really appreciate the support um, and it's really important. It helps this channel out a lot.